In this simple example, I've got more than one battery and I've got a couple different loops to work with. The goal is to find all the currents. The first thing to identify is the fact that I have several junctions here. And the junctions are going to break up my current. So I'm not going to have one current for the whole circuit, but I'll have several currents for the whole circuit. To begin, I'm going to choose some directions for the current. And I'm going to pick it kind of randomly. So I start with my 9 volt battery and the current going up and around the left loop. And then when it hits the bottom junction, it splits. And that's where I've got I2 and I3. Now in each branch, I've kind of color coded it with the red, the green, and the blue, and they all have the same current in each branch. So the branch on the left, I've got a 9 volt battery, 6 volt battery, and 12 ohm resistor. They all have the same current. On the branch on the right in blue, that I3, that's got a 6 volt battery and a 3 ohm resistor. Because they're in series, they all have the same current. Now to begin with, I'm going to choose the easy way out. I'm going to write an equation for the junction. So if you want to, you can pause at this point and try writing it and then checking it with my work. So when I write the equation, I get I1, the current going out, equals I2 plus I3. So the current going out equals the sum of the currents going in. Now remember, the junction is going to split up the current, so this gives me three currents, which means I'm going to need three equations to find out the right answer. You can also note that the junction at the bottom is just the opposite of the junction at the top. I've got I1 going in, and I've got 2 and 3 both going out. So it sets up as the same equation, so you don't want to use that junction as your second equation to find I1, I2, and I3. For other equations, we're going to use the loop theorem, or the loop rule. So I'm choosing my analysis direction as going counterclockwise in my left-hand loop. Now what I need to do is find the voltage drops and the voltages added and subtracted from the batteries. So when I do this, I'll start at the top junction, and I'll go across the 9-volt battery from negative to positive, so that's plus 9 volts, across the 6-volt battery from positive to negative, so that's minus 6 volts, and then when I go across the 12 ohm resistor, I'm going with the direction of current when I analyze it. So since I'm going with the direction when I analyze it, I subtract I times R. So I'm going to subtract I1, because that's the current in that part of the loop, times the 12 ohms. And then I get down to the bottom, and as I work my way back up to where I started the top junction, I can choose to go either up through the green current or over to the blue. It doesn't matter which direction. But if I'm sticking to the loop on the left, then I'm just going to stay on the green current there. So that's going to be 6 ohms minus 6 ohms times I2. And then when I simplify that, I get an equation that says 3 is equal to 12 times I1 plus 6 times I2. Now I need a second loop. So I've got two equations. I need a third equation. To get that third equation, I'm going to go for the second loop. So I'm going to choose the loop on the right. That's going to be the blue loop. My analysis direction, I'm going to move around in a counterclockwise direction again. And I'm going to do the same thing, adding and subtracting voltages from the resistors and from the batteries in a loop. So I'm going to start at the bottom junction and say that 0, that's what they all add up to, equals negative 6 across the battery, because I'm going from plus to minus, so that's negative 6. Remember to ignore the current across the batteries. Then as I go up, there's nothing there. I'll go over to the left across the 3 ohm resistor. And since I'm analyzing in the direction of my assumed current, I subtract the IR drop. So that'll be minus I3 times 3 ohms. Then I'll turn downwards, going back down towards my junction at the bottom. And when I do that, I'm going against the direction of the current. And whenever you analyze against the direction of the assumed current, you add the I times R. So this time I'm going to add I2 times 6 ohms. And when I simplify this, I get an equation that says 6 is equal to negative I3 times 3 plus I2 times 6. So now I have three equations and three unknowns. At this point, I just need to solve for I1, I2, and I3 using a couple different methods. I could use linear combinations, or I could use some matrices. Whatever method you choose, you should get the answers of I1 equaling negative 0.071 amps, I2 is equal positive 0.64 amps, and I3 is equal to negative 0.71 amps. 
So the question here is, can you have negative current? Well, you can have negative current because it goes in the opposite direction. So I've got to realize this. And when I do, I've got to remember that if I'm looking for the directions of the currents, so I've got the magnitude of the currents, then now for the directions, I1 and I3 are negative currents in my analysis, which means that I assumed the wrong direction. I should have assumed I1 to go clockwise and I3 to also go clockwise. I2 was a positive answer, so that one was actually assumed to go in the right direction. If I had to use these currents and other parts of the circuit to analyze, and I'd already written out all my formulas, I would use my negative numbers in the other parts of the analysis. I wouldn't suddenly switch over to positive. I would leave everything alone and just keep using the negative numbers again.